All right, everybody, welcome. Thanks for coming to the Team Rhino Call Live. And then those of you that are uh, watching the recording, thanks for picking up the recording and checking this out. Um, I have a good topic today. We're going to talk about how to create a WordPress blog or website, which basically WordPress can give you both. Um, you can read it like a website and not just a blog. So um, I'm actually going to move you everybody just to make sure that we can hear. Where do I? Hmm. Mute. Okay, I think we got everybody. All right. So um, <clears throat> before we do that, I just want to mention that uh, Brooke Brown started up. Uh, you know, talking about a group for Court of Force, which starts on November twenty first. Court of Force launches October 31st, which is coming up here in less than a week. So um, I also posted in the group about there's two different challenge packs that they're doing for Court of Force, which we've never done before. There's a the normal challenge pack where you get the DVDs, you get 30 days of um, Beachbody On Demand, and you get your Shakeology, and I think that's priced at $140, if I'm not mistaken. Usually when they're coming out, they are. Uh, you know, check the FAQ to be sure, but, and what I posted. Um, but then the other one is a digital challenge pack, which we've never done before. And that basically gives you 90 days of Beachbody on demand and access to that program for that full 90 days, plus your Shakeology. And it's the same price. And there's some other little things like you get the big container with the containers of 21 day fix and the portion fix thing. And there's some, there's some slight differences. If you look at the comparison that I posted in the team page. Okay. So get to know those, those differences and what you want to talk to your people about. Um, one thing that I was thinking, I was talking to Brooke Brown on the phone the other day and it was like, you know, do we want to, I'm not sure about that digital challenge pack because when you get the digital challenge pack, you're basically getting access to it for 90 days. And if you do not continue your Beachbody on demand, then you don't have access to that program anymore either. If you buy the DVDs, you get 30 days of access to Beachbody on demand. And if you don't continue your on demand, you still have the DVDs and you can still use the program. So are people going to want to do the digital challenge pack? And, and uh, my thought was a lot of people rent movies, you know, uh, and they'll pay $5 to rent a movie that they could buy for $20. Right. And so I think if I was talking to somebody about the digital challenge pack, I would say it's kind of like renting the program for 90 days for basically $10, right? You get $130 worth of Shakeology for 10 bucks. You rent the program for 30 days. You don't have the DVDs and all that kind of stuff. So think about, I'm not telling you push the digital challenge pack or don't push the digital challenge pack. I want you to go and look at the two and say, and know everything about them so that when you're talking to customers about the new core to force, you can give them the options or decide which one, you know, you want to talk to them about or however you're going to do it, but you should know the options, the differences and how to talk about it. Okay. So that comparison is in the team page from a few days ago. I can post it again if somebody can't find it. All right. So core to force coming up. Um, I hear that there's another health bet coming too. I haven't seen the details on it yet. It's probably in the coach online office news. I haven't looked yet today, but I hear there's another health bet coming. Um, I'm not sure if I'm personally actually going to push that the health bet um, because I'm already doing a power of the pack group, a biggest loser group, and I'm going to participate in this court of force group. So I'm not sure if I'm going to do the health bet, but it's going to be there, I think, for people to use as a tool to uh, bring in some new customers and talk to people about the stuff. Okay. Um, pay attention to your coach online office. Do you have any, something to say, David? Yeah, I heard it was coming up in January, the health bet. Oh, is the health bet coming in January? Okay. Yeah, I haven't seen the news on it yet. But um, okay. So with that, um, we're coming to the end of October here. We'll be doing recognition for October, which includes activity tracking. So if you're tracking in something other than the Team Rhino Activity Tracker app, then make sure you get in there at the end of the month and put your activity in. If you're doing it by hand or you're doing team Z, like I know David does. And I think Brooke is doing team Z now. Um, you can go into the team Rhino activity tracker in our app and put in all of your 
your data so that you can be part of the activity tracking challenge that gets you recognition and um, is also a way to get to New Orleans uh, for the Rhinola retreat. So uh, coming up to the end of October here. Now what I want to talk about today and what we're going to get into now is how to start a WordPress website. And the reason that I thought this would be a great topic, uh, several reasons, there's been people on the team for a while who have talked about uh, starting a WordPress website, and I think um, it seems a bit overwhelming just to get to it, you know? It's like, uh, I don't really know the first few steps. Once you have the website set up, WordPress is about the easiest thing in the world to actually put content out on. It's like using Microsoft Word you know, which I admit word can be frustrating sometimes, but it's not hard to know how to use it, right? You type in, you can add images, you can, you know, space things. It's, it's pretty much like using a word processor. It's not a whole lot different than that. Um, but getting a host and a domain and, you know, setting it all up and making sure that when people type in the web address that you want, it goes to your website and it looks like you want it to look and there's a thousand different themes and all this kind of stuff. So, um, what we're going to do is kind of just go through it step by step and I'll take you inside of one of my websites just so you can see what it looks like in there and you can see how things work. So if you're taking notes, the first thing that you need, number one, is you need a domain name. And the domain name is simply what people type in to get to your website. So beachbody.com is a domain name, right? And trybasetraining.com is one of my domain names. Teamrhinotraining.com is a domain name. Um, when I first started my first uh, website, I think the, really the only two that people were doing at the time were .com and .net. Um, there might have been .biz, B-I-Z at the time. I'm not sure how long that's been out. But since then, they've actually opened up those .coms at the end to include a ton of other things. In fact, you can actually get domain names now that are .fitness and .beer and dot, like, probably .wine, Heidi, probably even .wine, I don't know. But um, you can do whatever you want. So I don't know if, if Brooke is on here. Um, I was just thinking, you know, you, she's, her like page is Adam and Brooke Fitness. She could actually create a website that's adamandbrooke.fitness. No .com on the end, no .net, adamandbrook.fitness, right? You could do David Coggin .fitness, Heidi Bortz .fitness. You could actually get those domain names, okay? Now, what you need to be able to get a domain name is you need to go to a domain registrar, which is a weird word that I don't like to say, but domain registrars own these things and you just pay them like $15 a year to own that domain name. Okay. Now the cool thing about it is, is that step number two can be combined with step number one because step number two is that you need to host your website somewhere. And most of the hosts out there who host websites also sell domain names. So they kind of package those things together and they're like, if you use us as your host, we'll give you one free domain name, right? So you get, you get to pick your domain name and buy it all through one source, okay? Now the way to think of hosting, hosting is simply where your website lives on the internet. So the domain is like pointing to where the thing lives, okay? So the domain, when people type that in, www.adamandbrook.fitness, that domain is going to point those people to the server that hosts your website and has all the files, okay? So you have to have a company that hosts that. It, they're not, it's not gonna connect into your computer where the files are, it's gonna connect to a server somewhere where the files are, okay? So you gotta hire somebody, you gotta pay somebody who has a server that's connected to the internet that hosts those files for you. That's what a website host does, is they just have the files on these big servers, okay? You could certainly buy a server and host your own website, but that would be ridiculously expensive. So what you do is you share host, and they've got this server that costs thousands of dollars, and they host thousands of websites on it at five bucks a month a piece, and that's how they pay for their servers, okay? So it's 
very, there's just so many website hosts out there. It's hosting companies. It's kind of ridiculous, but some of the big names that you may have heard of before are GoDaddy, uh, HostGator is another big one. Bluehost is another big one. Uh, I have used aplus.net, which is a P L U S.net. And there's just tons of them out there. And as far as shared hosting goes for blogs and websites, like what we're going to create, they're usually pretty comparable. Like it's pretty much the same stuff. It's shared hosting. It's not your own server and they can handle a WordPress website just fine. If you start getting into where you've got a shop where people are like, you're like shipping stuff to people and people are paying through your website, like your beach body or something like that, then you might want to get off of one of these shared hosting things and do something a little more expensive that there's less people on the server with you. But for us, any of those things are going to work. Okay. So pick one of them, go to their website, Bluehost, HostGator, GoDaddy, something like that. Pick one of them and they actually have walkthroughs that say, okay, for five bucks a month, seven bucks a month, nine bucks a month, 15 bucks a month, we're going to give you this, 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 and this, a domain name. They're going to have WordPress install all integrated into it, all that kind of stuff. Okay. So step two is really kind of the big step, which is pick your host. Okay. So I'm going to show you guys something. I'll actually share my screen with you. So I Googled, can you guys see my screen? Just thumbs up for, for me. Yep. Okay. So I Googled how to start a WordPress blog. Okay. Now this is one of the first ones that came up. It's by a website called WP beginner, WordPress beginner basically. And it's how to start a WordPress blog. Now this is like the blog of Bluehost, which is a hosting service. So what they've done is they've created a step-by-step -step process of how to start a WordPress blog with a whole bunch of links in it to make them your website host. Okay. It's pretty brilliant actually, but they're a recommended word WordPress host and they've been around for a really long time. So they're probably fine. So you could go to something like this and you could literally just walk through this process of starting your WordPress blog. It tells you how to, how to register your domain, how to choose website hosting. Of course it recommends itself, uh, how to install WordPress, all that kind of stuff. Okay. So, See here, click to claim this exclusive Bluehost offer. <laughs> it's awesome. Okay, so it's really like go to GoDaddy, go to HostGator, whatever you want, pick them. The one thing I would look for, if you really do not want to be techy with this at all, is that the host has uh, easy, like one-click WordPress install. Okay, and they'll usually tell you that in, when you're like picking a plan, you know, like what, what hosting plan you're going to say, it's going to tell you uh, we've got one, one click WordPress install. And what that means is that you don't have to take files and like transfer them to a server through file transfer protocol with server names and all that kind of stuff. You literally log into your account at Bluehost or host daddy, host gator or GoDaddy, and say, I want to install WordPress. And then it asks you a few questions and it installs WordPress for you. Literally that simple. Okay. So Bluehost is one of those on this thing. It tells you, Hey, I want to, I want to buy a domain right through Bluehost. It'll tell you whether it's available or not. You'll be able to pick the domain you want. It'll uh, ask you if you want to buy any of these domain privacy protection things, whatever you can read through those. And then it's like install WordPress click, tell them what domain you want, blah, 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 click a few buttons, WordPress will be installed, okay? Now, once WordPress is installed on your host with your domain that you want, you're going to get um, the standard WordPress theme, which is like what your blog looks like, and it's super, super, super simple. I think there's a picture of it in this. Uh, it looks like this. Hello world has one post in it, has some things on the side here. And the title is like start a WordPress site. Okay. So it's like, that's what your website will look like. Like you've got a shell of a website and it's at the domain that you bought. So you go to adamandbrook.fitness. Here's your website. Okay. 
Now, what does the website look like in the back end where you can actually do stuff? Uh, ooh, let's see, I've got to reshare here because I shared only one thing. Share my whole desktop. Okay, so let's say you picked adamandbrook.fitness. You would go to adamandbrook.fitness slash wp-admin, which they'll tell you that, so don't worry about that. But it's going to bring you to an admin login. And so I'm just going to log in in that back end admin of my WordPress site here. Hopefully I got my password right so that it actually logs into the site. There we go. So this is the back end of a WordPress site. You see you have posts, media where you can upload pictures and all kinds of stuff into a media library. There's pages. Um, you can see your comments. All this kind of stuff is what you're going to see. Okay. And literally to make a new post on your website, you're going to click add new post. And it's going to bring up an editor that gives you a title and then space to type and do stuff, okay? Type out your, your blog post, what you wanna say, throw a picture in there by clicking add media and publish the post over here, uh, over here, okay? It's like literally that simple to put out content, okay? But I'm actually getting ahead of myself. So we did, step one was getting a domain, right? Step two was getting your host. Step three is installing WordPress, okay? So if you've got a host that has one-click WordPress install, boom, done, right? WordPress is installed. Once your WordPress is installed, step three is to pick a theme, okay? You need to pick a website theme that you can use to make your website look like you want it to look, okay? Um, so inside your website, you have this appearance, and then themes, and it will show you all the themes that you have available to you. I have several themes that I've downloaded into this site that I could uh, activate. Right now, Optimized Press is the theme that is activated right now, but I have this thesis theme in here, and uh, these ones that are like 2011, 2015, 2014, those are the standard WordPress ones, like the Hello World one that we looked at. It, it will automatically come with one of those installed, okay? All you need to do to change it is click Add New, and you will come up with a list of something like 16,000 different themes to look at, <laughs> which will make it super difficult to decide which one you want. But you can literally look through all of these themes. Some of them are free. Some of them you have to pay for. There's tons and tons of free ones. You can, uh, you can preview it so you can see what the theme looks like, uh, overall look of it. And then you can activate it right there. So you can say, I want to install this theme. Okay, click install. It'll take you back to themes and it'll show that theme in here installed. Like if I had clicked install, it would come up like this. Not active, but in here. And you can click activate, and it'll change your blog to look like that theme looks, okay? And then you'll be able to um, customize it using this customize button on your active theme. You'll be able to move things around and change colors and whatever that theme will let you do, okay? So that's how you change the look of your theme. Um, I'm going to stop for a second and uh, let people ask questions because I went through like four major, major steps, which are get a domain, get a website host, install WordPress, change your theme to what you want. So let's talk for a second here, bringing up the chat. Uh, Okay, so Jill says, today I created a WordPress blog, but I did not get a host. Did I go in the wrong order? Um, so Jill, are you able to talk to or just chat? Just chat. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now, cool. Okay, hey, awesome. so did you go to wordpress.com and create a blog? Yes. Okay, 
Okay, so I probably should have talked about that at the beginning. Um, I was running through this, like how I would do it. So there's two different ways to do WordPress. There's WordPress.com and then there's WordPress.org. Okay, so the difference is WordPress.com, you don't need a host. It's hosted right there on WordPress.com, but you don't get to pick your own domain name. You get something like, well, you do, but you, you get something like adamandbrookfitness.wordpress.com. Okay, so everything has .wordpress.com in it. Um, and it's way less customizable, and you cannot buy like a full like Adam, Adam and Brook fit, Adam and Brook dot fitness or davidcoggin.com. You can't do that on WordPress.com. It's all hosted with them. Okay. So it did tell me that for three bucks a month, I could remove the word dot WordPress.com. So it's just my name.com. Oh, really? They're doing that now. That see, that didn't used to be like that. There was no option for that. Um, are you able to install, do you know if you have, that's the other thing I think they don't allow on there is, uh, plugins. So plugins are a huge customization part of WordPress. Like you, you're going to use plugins. Um, if you're going to do a blog, like something that you're actually using for business other than just putting out like a family blog, you know, like most people use wordpress.com for like a family blog, you know, okay. uh, you're just putting posts out you're never going to like take a payment through it. You're never going to have like a contact form where people can contact you through your website, right? You're just, you're, it's a blog, you know? Um, okay. If you're on a host and you have your own uh, URL and all that, you can do all these customization things that I'm going to show you uh, like what plugins do in just a second. So um, you, you did fine for creating a blog, but it's not uh, the same as what we're talking about. It's not as customizable, if that makes sense. Okay, yeah, that does, thank you. Okay, cool. Okay, so themes. Um, let me talk about Optimized Press real quick since um, I told you there's like 16,000 themes in here or some ridiculous thing and y'all are gonna be like, well, what, you know, which theme do I use? Okay, so Optimized Press is a paid theme. I, have, I bought that theme. And I highly, highly recommend that theme. It's $97. It's one time. There's no monthly or anything like that. It's $97. The cool thing about it is that it has a landing page creator, like an opt-in page creator within it that like you can create. Have you ever seen when somebody says, hey, get download my free ebook? And you click on the download your free ebook, and it's this really nice page. It doesn't have menus of a website or anything. It's just a page and it has the place where you opt in and maybe a video right that tells you about it and like big button that says send me the free ebook it's like that's like a sales landing page optimized press has a like a normal website theme in it but then it also has this page creator in it that can override on top of your theme and create these cool landing pages. So you could say, you know, opt in for my, uh, for my challenge group here and you could create this cool like landing page. So it's got some cool customization things in it and the blog theme, the main website theme is pretty powerful and cool too. So I recommend Optimize Press, but you can totally create a website an awesome website on any of these free themes that are in here. You just have to sift through and find one that you like the style of it, you like the look of it, and install it. The cool thing about the free ones is you can install, you know, 50 themes if you want, activate it, see if you like it, go, no, I don't like that, activate another one. You know, there's no like, you have to pick one and once you pick it, you're done. Like, just keep changing your website until you find one that you like, okay? Is that, is everybody with me here? I can only see like four of you, so. <laughs> Trying to see if there's any blank stares <laughs> before we move on. Everybody good? Okay, now the difference between um, pages and posts. I wanna show you the difference between pages and posts. I'm gonna actually go to this See if I can get my website to come up. This stupid thing always gets in the way. I'll go to this other place. Okay, so this is the website for the um, 
this is the front end of the website that we were just, I was just showing you the back end. Okay. So when you put out a post, it goes to basically your blog. Okay. And so I have this blog button right here in the menu. And these are posts that I have done. Okay. But when I'm at the home page and I've got these menus up here, these are pages that I've actually created and then I've added them to a menu. So a post is like, um, would be something that you are putting out regular content on, you know, like a blog, right? You're putting out uh, something about what happened to you this week, something that's coming up, news, you know, things that you're doing uh, on a regular basis. A page is more like something that's you're going to put in a menu that people can find on your blog or your website when they come to your website. So like an about us section, this has two different pages that I've created, one for contacting me, one for learning more about my story, right? That wouldn't be something I would put out on a post because the posts kind of are like a Facebook feed. As I put out a new post, that one I put out before moves down and then I put out another one and it moves down. I put on another one and it moves down, right? Pages are things that you would put like on a menu where people can find them every time they come to your blog. Okay. So that's kind of the difference between a page and a post. So the pages capability and the menu capability is what makes a wordpress.org blog more like a website. So you can create this front page and make it your home page, like this one that, that you're seeing right here. I created this page and I said, I told it in the customizer, I want this to be my homepage, not the blog. I don't want people to end up on my blog when they go to trybasetraining.com. I want them to end up on this page. This is my homepage, right? And then I, I want these pages that I've created to be in my main menu and I want my main menu to be up here. And all of that is customizable and pretty, um, what's the word for it? Uh, what you see is what you get, right? It's, it's like an editor that you can go, Oh, I don't want that there. I want to do this with it. Right. And you can move things around and say what you actually want. Um, oh, okay. So Sarah asks, how are you getting people to your page through Facebook? Um, there's lots of ways that I'm getting people to the page. One of them is driving them through Facebook um, another one is people are finding it in Google. So when they're Googling things and I have things on my blog that or on my website that relate to that, they'll find my website that way. Um, but you can run ads to it. You can do all kinds of stuff to drive traffic to your page. And that's actually, I think going to be the main topic of next week's team call is what are you going to do with your blog? Once you have it, <laughs> why would you want to have a blog? But let's talk about it real quick like just the basic idea of it. Why do you need a website? Why would you want to have a website if you're going to take your business to the next level? What, what does a website do for you? So I was at this, um, the fit club network, which is my upline coach, Dave and Monica had this little retreat for some of the top leaders on their team. And it, luckily they live right here in Coronado where I'm living right now. So I didn't have to travel anywhere for it, but I got to go to this little retreat. And one of the people that came to the retreat was Cindy Tremblay who is a uh, French Canadian lives um, over on the East coast uh, in Canada. And she's literally, she literally puts between 40 and 60 success club points on the board every month. Like it's nuts what she's doing. And so I got to sit down with her and really talk through, you know, like what does she do? And um, there's a couple of things that she's done uh, that have been, you know, just, a huge part of it. But one of the things that started it all was she's French speaking and Beachbody has no French stuff, right? That everything's in English or Spanish. That's all they have. And so she took like the entire 21 day fix book, like the fitness pro fitness booklet. And she created a French version. She translated the whole thing herself into a PDF and like put the same pictures and all the same stuff and made a French version of that and made a French version of P90X and made a French. I mean, she just started translating all of Beachbody's materials herself into French and she created a website and then she started telling people that if she was their coach, they buy the program. It comes in English. She'll also send them the French version of that thing. Right. Which is like, okay, well, how does that relate to me? Because I don't have an opportunity to do something like that, right? Like I can't corner the market on, 
you know, some other language because I don't speak any other languages or whatever. Um, but the point was that she started making when she started talking about her website is that she drives everything to her website. So down to when her coaches ask a question, she, if she has a video that answers that question, she sends them the link to her website where that video is embedded, right? And if her customer has a question about how the 21 day fix works, she has a resource on her website that she can send them to. And if she doesn't, then she answers the question and she then goes and makes the resource and puts it on her website. And then every time somebody asks that same question, she drives them to the website and drives them to the website. And then the website views go up. So there's lots of people coming to the website and Google goes, Oh, this is a popular website. Right? And so when people Google 21 day fix French, guess what they get her website. Right? And she just constantly pushes people to her website. And then she does um, workout videos. She does a, a monthly newsletter. She has people sign up for a newsletter, but everything goes to the website. And she just has a simple WordPress website that of course it's in French. So you can go there. I think it's like supercardio.com is, is what it is. But I think it's supercardio.ca, supercardio.ca for Canada. So um, you can go there and check it out, but it's all in French. Most of us won't be able to read it. <laughs> But she is a big believer in the website because she can always send people to that website to get their questions answered and to see stuff that she's doing. Because her thing is, when, you're, when you put out good information on Facebook, that's fine. But that information, it doesn't really go away, but there's no way to find it anymore, right? You put out this great post that tells people you know, the best way to do this or the best way to do that, or, you know, some awesome piece of insight that you had one day, you just had this epiphany and you're like, you know, the 17 page long Facebook post that everybody's like, well written David Coggin, that's awesome, you know? And then like two weeks later, you can't even find that post, you know, I mean, it's gone. So she would maybe post that on Facebook, but then create a blog out of it right? And then she's got content and she sends it out in a newsletter and she pushes people to the website, constantly pushing people to the website. Okay. So that's the, the, um, the, the short, an the, that's the short answer. Next week we'll do the long answer of what you do with your website and how you get people there and why you want to have a website. Okay. So how does everybody feel about being able to Go find a host, pick a plan, pick a domain name, get WordPress installed, all that kind of stuff. Any questions on that right now? No questions, you can use the chat or you can unmute and speak up. The only other thing we're really gonna talk about a lot here is I'm gonna go back to, we're in the, um, in the back end of the website right now. So this is the admin area. This is where you actually create the content. We were just at the front end where viewers go to see it. This is the WordPress dashboard. Um, I'm gonna talk about plugins for a second, okay? So plugins are what make your website super unique from other websites out there, okay? There's, there are literally, I think on the order of, 46,000 plugins out there. So that's the cool thing about WordPress is that it's an open source platform that any um, programmer can go out and create a plugin that grabs onto the platform and does something cool, right? So like one of them, um, let me just look through the ones that I've got in here um, that would make sense to talk about pretty easily. Uh, do I have the contact form in here? I have a contact form in here. What am I, oh, C forms. Okay, so that's one. Um, okay, so social media icons widget. This is a plugin. You literally just download the plugin. So you can go to like add new, just like themes, search all the plugins. So you could search for social media buttons. And all this plugin does is on all of your posts, it adds share buttons. So it adds a little Facebook button and a Google Plus button and a, 
uh, you know, all the different buttons, uh, Pinterest button, all that kind of stuff so that someone could share your blog post. Okay. So when you go to a blog post, it has those on there and it's a customizable thing. It, when you install it, it puts a little extra, um, menu item over here and I'll, I'll just click on this one so we can look at, at what it does. Uh, social media widget. What is this one? Hmm. Why is it doing that? Let's look at a different one. <laughs> I thought I had that one all installed, but uh, maybe I don't have that one installed. Um, there's the there's another Facebook one that does that uh, social media widget. So here's one that um, allows you to create a contact form. So this WP mail SMTP that allows you to create a contact form on your website where people can go and say, uh, I want to, I want to actually email this person and contact them. And it's, you, you've seen a contact form, right? You go to a contact us, there's a form on there and you fill it out. And that, that plugin allows that information to be emailed to your email through your website. Okay. So that's not something that's, automatically in WordPress, you just install a simple plugin and it does that for you. Okay. So you can do so many things with plugins. Um, if we go to, if we went to the team Rhino training website and looked in the back end, there's a plugin that creates that activity tracker that we use to track our activity. It creates those forms and it stores all that information and it has buttons in there to download the information. So I know how many people have, tracked how many things. Okay. That's just a plugin that goes into your website. It could be something that adds pop-ups on your website. It could be something that adds, um, uh, newsletter signup forms on your website, all kinds of different things. So what do you want to do with your website? Do you want to add, um, you want to add your Google calendar onto your website so people can see what your schedule is. There's a plugin for that, that connects to your Google calendar so that people can see your schedule. Right. Why would you want to do that? Well, if you're, there's another plugin that you could actually have people schedule a call with you like Calendly or Acuity scheduling has plugins that you could actually show a schedule and have people click on a time that they want to uh, actually book a call with you and they could click on that and, and it would send you an email and say, this person just booked a call for you with you at one o'clock on Friday you know, and, and they get an email saying your call with so-and-so all kinds of different plugins. Okay. So that's the basics of what a WordPress blog looks like that you can create new posts. You can create new pages. Um, you can change the theme to make it look different and you can add plugins to make it do stuff. Okay. So, um, I think, that's probably enough information. I keep thinking of things and like, Oh, I could tell them about this and oh, I could tell them about that. But I'm not, I don't, I don't really don't want to do that just because I want some people who are like on the verge of like, I really need to get a website. I would like to see some of you go set up a website and just get, get a host, get WordPress installed and maybe pick a theme and, or somewhere in that range, like right in that area where you're like, okay, I think I have a theme that I want, or tell me more about that optimized press thing you were saying, should I really pay $97 for that? Or should I just get a free theme? And then talk with me about where you're at. And if you're stuck anywhere there, because if we could start talking about more plugins, we could start talking about creating menus for the top of the blog. We could start talking about all that stuff, but it would be best, I think, if everybody who doesn't have a blog, Word, uh, WordPress blog right now, got to the point where it was installed, they have a domain name, and they could actually put out a post right now if they wanted to, okay? So I think I'm gonna stop there. Questions are fine, let's do questions as much as we want until uh, everybody's good, and then please, please, please message me, tag me in Team Rhino, whatever, to help you get this set up because I, I don't want anybody to be stuck like, well, I tried it and it didn't work. I'll help you get there. We will get there. Um, and the other thing, so the only other thing that I would say is if, if what we just went through, you're just like, there's no way, just not techy enough, can't do it. First of all, I would say, 
I would challenge you on that. I'm not sure that that's true. But if you really, really, really are sure that it's not, I have a guy who is 25 bucks an hour who could set up a website for you in probably like three to five hours. He could have it to the point where we just talked about probably a way less than that actually, but he could actually do customization for you and do all kinds of stuff at like 25 bucks an hour. And he's really, really good. So I can give you that name, but I think most of you, if not all of you can get there to this point where you have a blog and then we can start talking about more advanced stuff to do in your blog and your WordPress site. So questions. Okay. I have a question. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I'm an old coach veteran, whatever you want to call me, but there are new coaches on this call and probably new coaches who are going to be watching this call. And I want to know what you think is a good, like, at what point do you start a website? At what point do you spend money on a website? How much money should you be bringing in from your Beachbody business um, before you start shelling money out on a website? That mm. kind of thing. Like, talk to me about expenses versus income. You know, that's a that's a that's an awesome question because it's a it, but it's super hard to answer too. Um, because it's different for different people. But I'll tell you this, I, if, if anybody that is serious about building this business is thinking about doing a website, even if you're a brand new coach, what we're talking about here is $15 a year for your domain name and 10 to $15 a month for hosting. So we're not talking about huge amounts of money. Now, if you have someone else design the, the whole website for you, pick your theme, customize it, do all kinds of stuff. You can spend, you know, a thousand bucks. You could spend 2000 bucks, you know, getting someone else to do it for you. But if you literally go to Bluehost, I think there's just like five bucks a month plus a domain name. So you don't even have to pay for that. You have to pay for it next year for 15 bucks or whatever. But you know, it's like five bucks a month and you click the one click install, pick your theme, pick a free theme, you know, you're up and running. So I would say if you're serious, you're like, so I want to do this and I want to have a place to put out my information. That's not just my like page. I want to put it on my blog and then post the link on my like page or put it on my like page and put it on my blog and, you know, do all those things. Um, you're going to be starting ahead because what happens if you're like six months into it and you're like, well, I'm doing okay. Now I want to start a, a website and you haven't been posting links from a website, you haven't been putting any information on a website, you know, that six months of information that you put out, all those things that you did, you could have had them on a website and your website could be six months old and be hiring Google and be doing more, right? So unless, you know, like 20 bucks a month is a real hardship, I would say you're serious about starting a Beachbody business, go start a blog, go start one, you know, and start, thinking it because that's the thing I mean like it's not like you have to there's any kind of a rule that says you have to put out you know six blog posts a week in order for the blog to succeed Cindy puts out one article a month and a monthly newsletter that's all she does on her blog is one article a month you know she just she also puts stuff on there that she can direct people to but like one new blog article that she sends out to her newsletter a month I was expecting her to say, you know, five a week. And she was like, yeah, I, I make sure I have one new blog article every month. <laughs> so it's, I think it's, you know, less than what people think. Does that help at all? It does help. And I just want to also point out, or I don't know if this is really a question, but all those expenses, the $20 a month, the $5 a month, whatever, this and that expenses, those are all part of business. <coughs> expenses and so therefore tax deductible correct uh well i don't like to give tax advice but i think so <laughs> okay those are all things you could ask your tax advisor about <laughs> yes i'm pretty darn sure those are tax write-offs yes if you have a business website those are all tax write-offs <laughs> yes yes absolutely I, you Why know you i mean tax advice ryan you give advice about everything else <laughs> <laughs> that's true it's true i do <laughs> Yeah, medical advice, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> uh, any other questions on, on starting a, a WordPress website? I, we will tackle some more of what to do with your WordPress website and, you know, like 
how are you going to drive traffic to it and why would you want to drive traffic to it? And how does it help you over, you know, just posting stuff on Facebook or, or something like that? We will talk about that. But if you've got questions related to that, feel free. I, you know, I'm not in a hurry to get off here. So no other questions. You can use the chat or you can unmute. If not, if not we'll, we'll call it a call it a night and we'll uh, dive into it more. I would love to see some people who are uh, who have websites set up by next week so we could actually maybe even look into one and and uh, start talking about somebody's actual website. Okay, I've got one. Oh. Got a question. Okay. I'm listening. Where, how do you find content for your website slash blog? Like I mean, like, don't you run out of ideas? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I definitely do run out of ideas. Um, I think uh, one of the one of the issues that that uh, causes me to run out of ideas is that I tend to lean towards needing to have some kind of profound article type driven thing to post. And people don't need that all the time. People love to be entertained, right? And so what are the things that you post on your Facebook, on your like page or whatever, that are entertaining, that are interesting, that are fun, that are motivational, you know? Like, I think we just get a little bit too wrapped up in, like, I need to write a BuzzFeed piece on running or something like that so that it's like this super valuable 2000 word article for my audience and you don't need that you know a simple thing like I was out you know I was doing my workout and I had this epiphany about this I was doing my workout and this happened um, you know here's what I ate today in, almost like it's Facebook you know you're putting out stuff that you know here's a recipe like I tried this you know and, you re, you know, uh, give people credit and repost a recipe from somewhere. You know, it just depends on what the whole idea of your blog is. Like mine's really about triathlon stuff, and I integrate all the P90X and stuff in there. So I will talk about running, and I'll talk about swimming, and I'll talk about biking, and I'll talk about strength training and how they all fit together. Um, but sometimes it's just something that about my training, right? It's like I put my race reports on my website. So when I finish a race, I write up my race report. There's my blog, right? People are interested to hear how I did in my race and they compare themselves. So, well, oh, he swims slower than me. Oh, he swims faster than me. Oh, he bikes faster than me, you know, whatever. Um, so I think that's one of the keys to having content is not feeling like it has to be like you're writing an expert piece, right? Anybody else? Yes. Does that did that help, Heidi? I don't know. Yes, thank you. I just know, like, when I have attempted a blog before, that's kind of I just get I just got stuff. Like, I don't know what to say. Well, I think you could come up with once a month, though, right? Yeah, I think I could come up with once a month. Yeah, I think you could probably. I think even once a week would probably be pretty doable for most people. Enough things happen to you. Um, and you have enough thoughts over the course of a week to have one blog post, right? I mean, most people do. Um, related to what your blog is actually kind of about, which is probably fitness and nutrition or, you know, healthy life or healthy family or whatever it is that you say, talk about, you know. Wine, dogs. Wine, dogs. Yeah, I mean, see, you know. It all all depends on how you uh, how you theme your blog. That's something we could talk about a little bit too. Is how are you going to you know theme your blog? Not like the theme of your WordPress website, but like um, not not how it looks, but the theme. You know? yeah. What's it about? What what would what would someone expect to get when they come to this blog? Hopefully, not a Beachbody portal. You know, it should be information and entertainment and things that relate to your life and would relate to people like you. We got it. Continue next week. 
All right. Thank you guys for coming. I hope that helps and uh, hope to see some actual blogs and websites set up and ready to go for next week. So I'll talk to you then. Thanks, right.